There is a legend in the world of magic that as long as a black cat is killed and its eyes are dug out at midnight when the moon rises, it can summon a cat spirit. However, this is not something that everyone can do. Only people born in the year of Een and the month of Een can summon a cat spirit however, not all of this is good either. Those who summon the cat spirit die cruelly, with only one common feature when they die, which is that the eyeballs inside their eyes have been turned into cat eyes in an ordinary university, eerie live stream quietly arrives at midnight. Who did it? Who is the dead person? Why do you still hear terrifying cat calls in the middle of the night all of this, only when it's appropriate can the dust settle? Chapter 1 Cat Abuse Video You are listening at NovelFull.audio This year's cold winter came particularly early, and many people have already started preparing thick winter clothes. However, students from Nanjia University are still not afraid of the cold and are still wearing autumn clothes to show off their body curves. Chu Qin ran early in the morning during peak traffic on the way to the morning rush hour. There were a lot of students on the road, and he couldn't figure out why he insisted on going to the morning rush. Isn't it better to sleep under the covers in such weather? But complaints come with complaints, but class still has to be attended. There are still ten minutes left before class, and you can see this petite figure running on the road. The girls' apartment where Chu Qing is located is a bit far from the teaching building where classes take place, so it is necessary to wake up early in the morning, otherwise not only will it be late for class, but it will also be difficult to find a good place to catch up on sleep. But as Chu Qing passed through a small forest, she suddenly saw many people gathered under a pine tree, and there were also many girls vomiting on the side. At this moment, it successfully aroused Chu Qing's curiosity. She saw that someone had already run ahead, so she stopped and ran towards the direction of the small forest. Before Chu Qing could reach the pine tree, a strong smell of blood mixed with a foul smell rushed towards him. Chu Qing almost vomited for a while. She stretched her neck and looked inside, only to see some blurry flesh mixed with black fur. At first, Chu Qing thought it was a dead mouse, but when a few people walked out with the animal corpse, Chu Qing saw at a glance what animal it was. It's a black cat that has been ripped open. At the moment of being picked up, the intestines and other internal organs of the black cat flowed directly onto the ground. After seeing this scene, Chu Qing couldn't help but turn his head and vomit in the dark next to a tree. In addition, he didn't eat breakfast and now there is nothing in his stomach. The only thing he can vomit is stomach acid. Just as Chu Qing was vomiting happily, the class bell rang. Chu Qing felt that the heavens really didn't give her a living, but there was no way she could attend class or go. She took out her phone and looked at it. In her dreams, there were people anxiously asking in the group where Chu Qing had gone. Chu Qing could only quickly wipe his mouth with his hands and run towards the direction of the teaching building. Report a slightly anxious, panting voice sounded outside the door, and Millie looked at the door with dissatisfaction. Which class are you from? Why are you late? Millie turned her head and saw that it was a little girl. Even the most dissatisfied emotions dissipated in an instant, but she still had to hold the teacher's authority. Sorry teacher, I didn't notice that the time was getting up late. It was Chu Qing who had just seen the bloody scene that came. Now, her face is pale and she may faint at any time, and she has not eaten breakfast. After vomiting just now, her whole body is simply weak. Fortunately, Millie didn't have too many difficulties to save. Watching her weak appearance and insisting on attending class, Millie was deeply moved in her heart. She quickly asked Chu Qing to return to her seat and then began the class. When Chu Qing sat in his seat, he breathed a big sigh of relief, but the gossiping roommate next to him immediately leaned in and started asking questions. They thought Chu Qing had secretly made a boyfriend, but he gave them a big glare. After drinking three sips of water with a thermos in her hand, Chu Qing recounted in detail what had happened on the way. The two roommates unconsciously stared and didn't even know where the teacher was talking, just listening to Chu Qing telling them a story. But things often happen so coincidentally, 
just 10 minutes before class ends, everyone in the classroom received an email in the class group, even Millie, who is a teacher, was no exception. After everyone opened it with great interest, their faces instantly changed. Inside is a video of cat abuse. In the small forest of the school, a person wearing a black coat is seen looking down at the black cat curled up around the tree trunk. The person's face is directly blocked by the wide brim, making it impossible to see who it is. I saw the person approaching the black cat step by step, holding an already opened art knife in his hand. In an instant, the screen went black, and those watching the video could only hear a mournful meow. Five minutes later, the video reappeared with the person slowly pulling out the internal organs of the black cat from its body. This scene directly witnessed all the teachers experiencing physiological discomfort, and even timid girls were scared and cried loudly, and even vomited while crying. Chu Ching finally realized that the black cat he saw in the morning was the one in the video, which means that the person who abused and killed the cat should be from this school, but he doesn't know what his purpose is. Is it simply for fun? Chu Ching saw the body of the black cat with his own eyes in the morning, and now he has no reaction, only his small face looks even paler. But her two roommates didn't have the courage anymore. They vomited in a daze, almost sliding under their seats like boiled noodles. Millie also had a bad expression while watching the video, but she still shouted and knocked on the table with a book in an attempt to calm down her students, but was unsuccessful. Fortunately, the bell for the end of class rang, and the bold student walked out of the classroom with a backpack. Millie also breathed a sigh of relief at this moment. The students walked out of the classroom one after another, leaving some timid ones sitting in their seats crying. Fortunately, Millie walked over to comfort them, which allowed the students to successfully go to the cafeteria to grab lunch. The rainy season in the Magic City comes unexpectedly, in an instant without warning. Chu Ching didn't go to the cafeteria with her roommate, instead she walked alone to the library. What happened today made her lose her appetite. She likes to soak in the library when encountering things, which allows her to completely let go and makes Chu Ching feel very comfortable. As soon as I stepped into the door of the library, someone brushed past Chu Ching and even lightly touched him with their shoulder. Chu Ching looked over and found that it was his other roommate. Su Xiao. It's strange that Su Xiao didn't attend class today. It turned out that she came to the library by herself. Chu Ching just gave her a slight smile as she prepared to go in, but Su Xiao grabbed her arm and whispered in Chu Ching's ear. Is today's video good? Chapter 2 Black Cat in the Rain You are listening at NovelFull.audio when Chu Qin heard Su Xiaoying's pitiful voice, his whole body suddenly became excited. Did you post the video? It's not me, I just received it. Chu Qin's lips trembled for a moment. The scene from the video just now was still vivid, especially the moment when the spear was twisted off. Thinking of this, Chu Qin couldn't help but feel nauseous. There was no expression in Su Zhao's eyes, only Chu Qing could feel the excitement in her tone. Chu Qing didn't want to be too entangled anymore, turned around and got rid of the constraints and walked towards the library, leaving only Su Xiao standing in place without knowing what he was thinking. After getting rid of Su Xiao, Chu Qing suddenly felt a little more comfortable in her heart. Most of her people are going to have lunch now, and there aren't many people in the library. Chu Qing chose a seat by the window and took out a book and pen from her canvas shoulder bag. She looked up and saw a young man sitting not far away. This is the fifth time Chu Qing has seen him in the library. The boy wears headphones on his head and always lowers his head to read. Occasionally, the boy will lift his head to show off his profile towards Chu Qing, which is also why Chu Qing likes to come to the library. As usual, Chu Qing continued to review his homework. Before long, it started raining outside the window. Chu Qing was not someone who liked rain. Listening to the sound of rain outside the window, Chu Qing no longer had the intention of reviewing, but simply dragged his cheeks and stared quietly outside the window. Gradually, the rain grew heavier and heavier, 
and Chu Qin slowly discovered a black figure in the rain curtain. The figure became more and more familiar as she looked at it, and she slowly stood up, her whole face pressed against the glass. At this moment, she saw it clearly. It's a black cat. There are many cats in the school that I know about, but now it's raining heavily, and a black cat is sitting there like a statue, looking a bit eerie and eerie. Chu Qing just kept looking outside, feeling like the cat was also looking at her, looking at each other like this. The sky gradually darkened, and the lights in the library went out one by one. It wasn't until the last light went out that Chu Qing realized it was already late at night. When Chu Qing turned around and started packing his things, and then turned around to look at the black cat, he could no longer see anything in the direction he had been looking at. The black cat melted into the entire night like this. When Song Wang Chu was about to leave the library, he saw the girl across from him staring out the window. He was also curious about what the girl was looking at, so he turned his head and looked out the window. Apart from the heavy rain, there was nothing, and Song Wang Chu felt a bit amused. He had seen this girl many times in the library, each time just a quick glance, without much communication. It was only this time that he realized that this girl was somewhat naturally attached to him. As Song Wang Chu passed by the girl, she was still looking outside and seemed to be laughing at something. Song Wang Chu just shrugged nonchalantly, then continued to wear headphones and leave. When he returned to the boys' dormitory, his roommates were all discussing the inexplicable video he posted today. Song Wang Chu didn't have much interest in these things, so he turned around and lay back in his bed. Hey, have you watched Lao Song's video today? Roommate Xiao Nand mysteriously leaned toward Song Wang Chu's ear, smiling with a lewd expression. Song Wang Chu was taking off his earphones and looking at Xiao Nan with a hint of helplessness. He thought Xiao Nan was going to create a new movie for him again, and just as he was about to speak, Xiao Nan leaned over his phone. I knew you didn't watch it, but I knew you weren't interested in these things. Don't worry, this is not a small movie. Someone is live streaming cat abuse in our school. Upon hearing these words, Song Wang Chu became somewhat curious. He knew Xiao Nan well, and besides small movies, he also liked some curious things. Maybe he saw something again this time to share with himself. Song Wang Chu simply sat up and came to Xiao Nan's side, staring at the screen without blinking. As Xiao Nan pressed the play button, the video instantly started to start. The front was still a normal scene, but in the back there was a bloody scene, and Song Wang Chu had already widened his eyes. He began to feel difficulty breathing, his mouth becoming stiff, and his entire body trembling unconsciously. Until the video finished playing, Song Wang Chu had not been able to walk out of the shock, but Xiao Nan beside him had already put away his phone. Xiao Nan used her elbow to turn Song Wang Chu, who was already stunned, and approached him with a contemptuous expression, saying. I said, old Song, are you so timid that you're scared out of your wits? This. This can't be a prank, can it? Song Wang Chu's tongue nodded and he couldn't speak clearly. Xiao Nan just laughed and told him that it was anonymously posted by someone. I don't know who posted it in each class group, and he also sighed at the leisurely people who posted the video. Song Wang Chu was already timid. Looking at this video again, he would rather watch Xiao Nan's short movie than watch the previous one again. After turning off the lights at night, Song Wang Chu covered his head with a blanket and opened his phone. As expected, he found a cat abuse video in the class group. Song Wang Chu didn't know what was going on. After turning off the lights, he bored himself playing with his phone, but the video he had just watched remained in his mind. By a stroke of fate, he still clicked on the video and put on his headphones. Although he had already watched it once, he couldn't help but tremble when he saw the scene appearing in front of him. After the video ended, Song Wang Chu couldn't fall asleep for a long time. Now his mind was filled with the tragic scene of the black cat being killed, and Song Wang Chu didn't even dare to close his eyes. On the way back to the dormitory, Chu Qing was surrounded by young couples affectionately. 
Chu Qing sometimes envies them. As a female college student, she also wants a sweet relationship, but this kind of thing still depends on fate, and Chu Qing can't be in a hurry. As soon as I stepped onto the steps of the dormitory gate, I saw Su Xiao caressing a black cat in a nearby corner, with a faint smile on her face. Perhaps it is the shadow of the small forest during the day, and now the storage is inexplicably resisting the black cat. Did you come back? Su Xiao picked up the cat in her arms and continued to caress it, while she spoke and approached Chu Qing. Chu Qing's next consciousness retreated, but he couldn't help but be pressed step by step by Su Xiao. Are you afraid? What are you afraid of? Come and touch it, it's so good. Chapter 3 Storage, Have You Fallen Asleep? You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chu Qing ran for her life and returned to the dormitory, but Su Xiao was accidentally hit hard by her, causing her body to stumble and almost fall. Su Xiao looked at Chu Qing's back and the corner of her mouth slightly hooked. As soon as he returned to the dormitory, Chu Qing forcefully closed the door and then leaned his back against the back of the door, panting hard. Ching Ching, what's wrong with you? Are you hitting ghosts? Originally, there was a joking remark before, but listening to it in Chu Qing's ears still made her face turn pale with a shudder. Now in her heart, Su Xiao is like that ghost, always appearing unnoticed and mysterious. Chu Qing Shun went smoothly and then told his roommates about what was happening outside the library and dormitory. For a while, his roommates were not calm anymore. I just said that Su Xiaoqi is strange and strange. I think she's just a lunatic. Besides, I once saw her talking to herself alone. Dot. As Chu Qing listened to her roommate speaking word by word, she inexplicably felt a sense of relief in her own heart. It's like joining the army criticizing Su Xiao now, but she didn't say anything, she was listening quietly. But when they roast that they were working hard, no one noticed that the door of the dormitory was opened, and Su Xiao stood at the door. Finally, the dormitory chief Long Qian discovered Su Xiao first, and she quickly went to pull the other people who were talking about being enthusiastic. Seeing Su Xiao standing at the door, some people wisely closed their mouths, but others chattered incessantly, referring to another girl in the dormitory. Mu Wan Mu Wan is famous for her vicious tongue in the dormitory. She can almost make people cry when she scolds people. In addition, she has always been against Su Xiao, so Mu Wan is always very energetic when she complains about Su Xiao. In the past, everyone roast behind his back, but today he was caught. Su Xiao walked into the dormitory without saying anything, just silently carrying her toiletries to the water room. Just as Mu Wan looked at her like this, she was still teasing her neck and shouting. What you're saying is the truth, what are you afraid of? It's mysterious and mysterious all day long, and I don't know who you're pretending to show it to. Mu Wan made another burst of output, and the other few couldn't bear to listen, especially Chu Qing. She quickly grabbed her belongings and fled to the water room. With the sound of the dormitory door closing, Chu Qing exhaled a deep breath in her heart. After arriving at the water room, Su Xiao seemed to be waiting for Chu Qing. She stood directly by the pool, staring at him without blinking. Chu Qing walked into the water room and watched Su Xiao staring at him, his eyes shining with a different light, which made him instantly uncomfortable. It was originally the bad words they said about him first, but in the end, he was caught and still felt guilty. Now, Chu Qing is completely afraid to face Su Xiao. Chu Qing lowered her head and dared not look directly at Su Xiao's gaze. She quickly turned on the faucet to wash her face, but didn't expect Su Xiao to have already arrived by her side. Chu Qing, did you see that black cat today? Just one sentence, almost scared, Chu Qing slipped and fell to the edge of the pool. Fortunately, the storage tank held onto the edge of the pool in a timely manner. Except for a slight pain in the palm, everything else was fine. What are you doing? Chu Qing was already a bit angry at the moment, and she began to use anger to cover up her guilt. 
Chu Qing stared at Su Xiao with a pair of apricot eyes, and his words became particularly loud and harsh due to excitement. Even there is residual facial cleanser on the face, which cannot be cleaned even after being stored. However, Su Zhao's face and expression did not change. She leaned closer and stared at Chu Qing's face, asking. Chu, have you seen that black cat today? When asked this sentence, Chu Qing couldn't hold her breath anymore. She didn't know what Su Xiao meant, but now Chu Qing just wanted to leave this ghost place as soon as possible. Chu Qing casually wiped his cheeks with a towel, poured out a bowl of muddy water, and returned to the dormitory with his belongings. However, Chu Qing still forgot his toothbrush next to the pool. Chu Qing has returned to her bedroom and her roommates have already gone to bed. Facial mask paper has been thrown all over the floor. Chu Qing has no time to care about it now. She quickly climbs back to her bed, pulls the quilt over her head, and she is really afraid. After a while, the dormitory door rang out again, and Chu Qing knew it was Su Xiao who had returned. The sound paused for a moment, followed by the sound of closing the door, followed by the sound of bottles and cans opening. After finally waiting for the sound to disappear, Chu Qinggang breathed a sigh of relief when he heard Su Zhao's voice again. Chu Qing, have you fallen asleep? Chu Qing can only pretend not to sleep with her, but Su Xiao is so persistent that she asks the same question again. Su Xiao still didn't get an answer. She placed the stored toothbrush on the table and climbed directly onto her own bed. This time, the girl's dormitory was completely quiet. The next morning, when Chu woke up, he found that Su Xiao was no longer in the dormitory. She doesn't care where Su Xiao went, it's just that last night's nightmare started to give her a headache. Since seeing that black cat, Chu Qing has always remembered it in his mind, even dreaming of it as a black cat. When she woke up, Chu got out of bed with two big black circles under her eyes. Mu Wan looked at her and mercilessly began to mock her again. Chu Qing was too lazy to pay attention to her, so he walked out with his toiletries in hand. Before reaching the water room, he was suddenly nauseous from a burst of bloody smell. The closer you are to the water room, the stronger the flavor becomes. At this moment, Chu Qing saw many girls crowded at the entrance of the water room, chatting and discussing something. Chu Qing tiptoed curiously to look inside, but who knew there were too many people and nothing could be seen. Chu Qing had no choice but to grab a girl from the neighboring dormitory and ask what exactly happened. That girl is the king of gossip, so she quickly pulled Chu Qing aside and began to speak vividly. It turned out that when someone got up to wash up, they found a dead black cat thrown into the pool. The entire pool was filled with blood and a nauseating smell. The black cat had its limbs cut off by someone, and even its tail was pulled off completely, and even the eyeballs in its eyes were missing. Although Chu Qing did not see it with his own eyes, he couldn't help but feel nauseous just listening to the girl's story. This matter has already alarmed the school leaders, but they did not say how to handle it. They just hastily said a few words and stopped paying attention to this matter. What he said was nothing more than, don't be afraid, I will give my classmates an explanation. Chapter 4 In Dreams You are listening at NovelFull.audio University has always been a place without secrets, and Nanjia University is a gathering place for gossip kings. The incident in the girls' dormitory only occurred during the day, and it has been less than half a day. The news of dead cats in the girls' dormitory has almost spread throughout the campus. Song Wangchu also heard about this while brushing his teeth. Xiao Nan vividly told him about it, completely ignoring the reaction of Song Wangchu beside him. Hearing it, Song Wangchu felt nauseous. Song Wangchu had not slept well the night before, but now that this incident has occurred again, he only feels a severe headache. As soon as the morning bell rang, students from Nanjia University rushed into the classroom. While the teacher had not yet arrived, the students were all passionately discussing what had happened this morning. Some people think this is a prank, while others say it was intentional, 
Just to gain traffic Song Wang Chu sat by the window listening, his head having been tingling since this morning. At first, he thought it was because he didn't sleep well, and with the increasing pain in his head and the feeling that his body was getting hotter, Song Wang Chu realized that he seemed to be starting to have a fever. He couldn't help but smile bitterly in his heart, his body was really sick every now and then. Xiao Nan sat next to him and turned her head to see Song Wangxiang's face turning red. Without hesitation, Xiao Nan reached out to probe his forehead, and as expected, Song Wang Chu was indeed sick. Sleeping trough, old Song, you have a fever now. Hurry up, I'll take you to the medical room. Xiao Nan withdrew her hand and quickly prepared to pull Song Wang Chu up. Song Wang Chu originally wanted to refuse, but now he had no strength on his body and didn't need any strength to be picked up by Xiao Nan like a chick. After leaving the teaching building, the cold wind blew on Song Wang Chu's face, making him feel much more comfortable for a while. Xiao Nan hurriedly took people to the medical room, but he didn't expect there to be so many people in the room today, and the school doctor was a bit busy. Hurry up, clamp the thermometer first, and bring it to me in fifteen minutes. The school doctor threw the thermometer at Song Wang Chu while coldly explaining. Song Wang Chu took off his down jacket and held a thermometer under his armpit. Today's medical room is mostly filled with sick students who come for injections, almost filling the entire room with beds. There are also boyfriends who accompany their partners to see a doctor, but they lie in bed and have their partner sit on the side while getting a bottle. It was time soon, and Xiao Nan handed over the thermometer to the school doctor. The school doctor took a look and directly arranged for Song Wang Chu to drip water. Xiao Nan sat on the side, taking out her phone and asking for leave for herself and Song Wang Chu. After finally finding an empty bed, Song Wang Chu lay down and fell asleep, while Zhou Nan sat on the small stool next to him guarding. After an unknown amount of time, Song Wang Chu began to dream in a daze. In his dream, he was wearing a black raincoat, with the brim of his hat pulled very low. He held a utility knife in his hand, and his eyes were fixed on a black cat curled up on the ground Song Wang Chu did not show too much pity for the black cat. He only felt that it was his prey, a plaything of his own. He slowly approached the black cat, even though it was constantly meowing, with its head tilted back, trying to awaken Song Wang Chu's pity. However, Song Wang Chu remained unmoved. For nothing else, he always believed that cats were inferior creatures, especially these black cats, which could successfully stimulate Song Wang Chu's abnormal side. I only heard a puff sound, and the art knife had smoothly penetrated the black cat's belly. When Song Wang Chu stabbed the knife in, he felt a hint of pleasure in killing. In this kind of pleasure, Song Wang Chu began to gradually lose himself especially when he heard the black cat's heart-wrenching cries. He felt even more like the god who ruled the universe under the stimulation of waves of pleasure, Song Wang Chu surprisingly began to enjoy it. He controlled the art knife in his hand and forcefully cut open the belly of the black cat. At this point, the black cat had not completely stopped breathing. After experiencing the severe pain just now, it felt like its stomach was being cut open by someone. The black cat struggled frantically with its final strength. But how could Song Wang Chu make it go as he wished? He reached out and held down the black cat tightly, while his other hand kept moving. Finally, the struggle of the black cat slowed down and its cries became quieter and quieter after the pleasure, Song Wang Chu pulled out the internal organs of the black cat and began to peel off its skin at this moment, Song Wang Chu even hummed a tune, which seemed like he had long been accustomed to. Finally, when he was about to throw away the black cat, Song Wang Chu seemed to have thought of something. He squatted down next to the body of the black cat and dug out its eyeballs with his bare hands. At this moment, a thunderbolt echoed through the sky, and Song Wang Chu also woke up, to be precise, he was startled. Xiao Nan, who was dozing next to him, was startled to wake up. He looked at Song Wang Chu, who was sitting up, and gently poked his shoulder with his finger. Old Song. Old Song, are you okay? Old Song. 
Song Wan Chu was still immersed in his own dream. He couldn't believe how he could be so cruel in his dream. Even though he saw blood, he would faint. But Song Wan Chu dared not think about it anymore. He felt that his dream self was so ruthless, which was a contrast to his real self. Song Wan Chu felt like he was going crazy now, his head was still hurting, but he had just dreamed and was sweating all over. Now he feels much better. Finally, amidst Xiao Nan's call, Song Wan Chu turned his head to look at him. Xiao Nan thought he had a nightmare, so she asked him to lie down again and tucked him in the corner before sitting down again. You scared me to death. All right, there's still a while left for your hanging bottle. Let's continue sleeping for a while. Song Wan Chu nodded and opened his mouth without saying anything. However, Xiao Nan understood his meaning and went out to pick up a full glass of water with a paper cup, then helped Song Wang Chu up and fed him. Only then did Song Wang Chu feel better. Thank you. Song Wang Chu struggled to speak, and as he spoke, he felt his throat dry and uncomfortable, as if it had been fiercely burned by a big fire. You're going to see someone else now. They're all in the same dormitory. Why are you seeing someone else like that? Xiao Nan put the remaining half cup of water on the bedside to prevent Song Wang Chu from waking up and drinking again. Watching Song Wang Chu fall asleep again, Xiao Nan took out her phone and began to pass the time. He opened his Weibo account as usual, and a message popped up that instantly caught Xiao Nan's attention. Chapter 5 Rumors About Cat Spirit you are listening at NovelFull.audio. A rumored report about Cat Spirit is being quietly sent, and Xiao Nan received the message as soon as he took out his phone. On Weibo, there are various browsing information. Out of curiosity, Xiao Nan clicked on it and upon entering the web page, a huge cat face poster appeared, with only a pair of eyeballs missing from the cat face. The sense of curiosity instantly caught Xiao Nan's gaze. Xiao Nan's fingers slid down the starting web page, and he stopped in an instant. His gaze was attracted by a string of words. Rumors about the cat spirit. Xiao Nan muttered a few words in her mouth and then carefully looked at the rumors on her phone. There is a legend in the demon city that killing a black cat at midnight and digging out its eyeballs can summon a cat spirit, which can fulfill your wishes after reading it, Xiao Nan immediately sneered at it. This was just a way to coax children. Although the poster was made in a unique way, it still couldn't completely make Xiao Nan's heart race. This rumor was actually told to him by his grandmother when he knew it, but he also had the same idea at that time. Xiao Nan just casually left the web page, but his mind still occasionally remembered it, seemingly with some expectations. Xiao Nan bored his phone for a while again, then looked up and found that Song Wangchu's hanging bottle had already been filled. He quickly called the school doctor to pull out the needle. Perhaps the school doctor's actions were a bit rough. In the moment of pulling out the needle, Song Wangchu was awakened by the pain, and he still frowned tightly. After successfully removing the needle, Xiao Nan pressed the wound on Song Wangchu, and Song Wangchu sat up. He felt much better now than before. After a morning of tinkering, both of them are now starving. After leaving the school clinic, Xiao Nan first sent Song Wang Chu back to the dormitory, and then went straight to the cafeteria to buy food. Fortunately, class was not over yet, and when Xiao Nan arrived at the cafeteria, there were not many people. He quickly prepared two meals and hurriedly walked back to the dormitory. When passing by the entrance of other dormitories, Xiao Nan was grabbed by someone's neck without paying attention. By the time he realized it, he had already been dragged into the other dormitories. What are you doing? Let go. Xiao Nan broke free and almost spilled the rice in his hand. What are you doing, kid? I almost choked my back, and this hand is too strong. Xiao Nan laughed and cursed and even slapped the person on the shoulder. The person who just kidnapped Xiao Nan to the dormitory is another sports student dormitory named Wang Yu. This Wang Yu is a legendary figure in the entire sports college. 
He hasn't graduated yet this year, and I don't know why, but he doesn't really care about it himself. No matter who, he likes to play with Wang Yu. Hee <laughs> hee, I'm here to show you something good. Xiao Nan looked at Wang Yu with a lewd smile on his face. He was now so hungry that his chest was pressing against his back. He really wanted to tell Wang Yu that he wouldn't wait for him to finish his meal before coming back. However, Wang Yu did not give him a chance to react, and instead hooked his neck and pulled Xiao Nan to the computer. Hee <laughs> hee, take a look. This is the poster I received today. Xiao Nan still thought that a poster could be so evil, until he glanced at it and instantly froze in place. Isn't this poster the one he saw today? This is not what surprised Xiao Nan the most, but what surprised her the most was that the black cat in front of this poster had eyeballs. And that eyeball looks. Why is it so awkward? Xiao Nan's brain is no longer able to think. He looked at the computer screen with his mouth half open not even realizing that the food in his hand had fallen to the ground. Hello, hello. Nan, are you okay? It's just a poster. Don't be so surprised, right? Or are you afraid? Wang Yu watched as Xiao Nan remained motionless after seeing the poster. He quickly reached out and poked Xiao Nan's arm, shouting in his ear. Wang Yu noticed that Xiao Nan's condition was not right. The poster itself was not as scary, but Xiao Nan's reaction was very wrong. It seemed like he was scared. Feeling the itching on her arm, Xiao Nan slightly regained consciousness. Where did you get this poster? Xiao Nan still asked this question. Although it was a poster that anyone could see, Xiao Nan didn't believe in such a coincidence, and it's hard to tell that Wang Yu is still interested in this kind of thing. Harmful. Isn't that what I posted on Weibo today? I think it looks pretty good, so I saved it. Have you read that rumor? Xiao Nan interrupted Wang Yu's words directly, staring at him with a nervous expression on his face. I see, these are all scams, who would believe them? Wang Yu has a carefree personality, but what he said is also true. Such rumors have no basis and no one will believe them. Xiao Nan agreed with Wang Yu's words on her lips, but she didn't think so in her heart. Xiao Nan didn't believe it that much, but there was a small area in his heart that was stirring up. He knew that he wanted to believe such rumors. The two chatted a few more words, and finally Xiao Nan's stomach began to protest again. Xiao Nan hurriedly picked up his lunchbox and returned to his dormitory. After finally finishing class, Chu Qing was directly awakened by his roommate. When Chu Qing woke up, there was still a trace of saliva hanging from the corner of her mouth, and her right cheek was covered in red marks. Hmm class is over now. Wow, everyone's almost gone. It doesn't shake you. You look like you can sleep here until night. Chu Qing listened to the mockery from his roommate and a blush flashed on his face. A few people had just packed their things and were about to leave when they saw Su Xiao at the door. Mu Wan and Long Qian didn't say anything, just frowned and left directly, but Chu Qing was just about to leave when Su Xiao stopped him. Is there anything else? Chu Qing frowned, she really didn't want to have any interaction with this neurotic roommate. I would like to invite you to go to the back mountain together. I have something to show you. Su Xiao spoke with a mysterious expression on her face, her eyes still flickering with excitement and excitement. Sorry, I have something else to do. Hey, what are you doing? Let go of me. So, Su Xiao Ben didn't pay attention to what Chu Qing said, but directly grabbed her wrist and dragged her away from the teaching building, heading towards the back mountain. The two of them were walking in front of each other, with many people looking back on the road. Su Xiao didn't take it seriously, but Chu Qing felt a bit embarrassed and said goodbye. Walking on the small path behind the mountain, there were basically no people, only the sound of the wind blowing through the leaves echoing. Here we go. It's here. Su Xiao suddenly stopped with Chu Qing and pointed to a small tomb, saying. Chapter 6 Cat Tomb 
You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Su Xiao stopped with Chu Qing, and the two of them were now in front of a small grave. Su Xiao was still excitedly pointing with his fingers. Here we go, that's it. Su Xiao's voice trembled slightly with excitement, even her fingers were gently trembling. What is this? Chu Qing's voice has always been gentle, without any emotions at all. Su Xiao didn't speak, just squatted down and quickly began to pick up the mound with her hands. As Chu Qing watched the mound gradually shrink, a sense of unease began to spread in her heart, which made her feel very uncomfortable. Until Su Xiao stopped, the body of a black cat appeared before his eyes. Nausea, when Chu Qing saw the body of the black cat, he immediately turned his head and began to vomit wildly, especially with a faint odor. I'll bury it here and store it. Come and take a look. Its body is still intact. Su Xiao picked up the body of the black cat with an infatuated expression and carefully rubbed it against her cheeks. After vomiting with red eyes, Chu Qing turned his head and saw this scene. In an instant, Chu Qing felt goosebumps all over his body. Su Xiao. You. Don't do this. Vomit. Chu Qing couldn't bear it anymore, and a wave of nausea made a comeback. He quickly turned his head and began to vomit. Su Xiao opened her eyes and carried the body of the black cat into her arms, stroking it step by step, as if the black cat was just asleep. This scene made her shudder. Chu Qing, what's wrong? Don't you like it? What the hell are you doing? Su Zhao's voice was that elusive, uncomfortable and difficult looking up. She had not eaten yet, and now there was nothing to vomit in her stomach. Chu Qing's eyes turned red, with one hand propped up on the tree and the other continuously breathing down his chest. Didn't you say? You really like cats. But why don't you like them? Su Xiao hugged the black cat and approached, taking a step back for every step towards Chu Qing. The two were deadlocked like this, and those who didn't know would still think it was dancing. Chu Qing was frightened and kept retreating until she was supported by a thick trunk on her back, only to realize that she had nowhere to retreat now. Enough. Don't come over again. Chu Qing collapsed and desperately shouted in the direction of Su Xiao. She also reached out her palm to stop Su Zhao's attack. He he he. Are you so scared? Su Xiao just casually mocked Chu Qing, his mouth curled up in mockery and his eyes fixed on him. Facing such ridicule, Chu Qing ignored it completely. Now, her face was pale, and sweat slowly rolled down her forehead. A rare cloudy day made Chu Qing feel extremely uncomfortable. I don't know what you're talking about, and I don't want to talk to you anymore. Get out of my way and I'll go back. This time, Su Xiao was very obedient and directly turned aside to give way. Chu Qing hurriedly picked up her backpack on the ground and fled, looking somewhat panicked and at a loss from her back. Su Xiao's face turned cold, and an inexplicable eerie atmosphere spread from the back mountain. Chu Qing, our game has just begun. Don't run away. After confirming that there was no danger after running out of the small forest, Chu Qing sat on a bench to the side, panting heavily. Since seeing the black cat that was killed, strange things have started happening around me. Chu Qing lowered his body and propped his head for a while to slow down. When he lifted his head, he saw a black cat squatting in front of him. Black cat. Is it again? Chu Qing looked at it, and it was also looking at him. This black cat was not afraid of life at all, and even leisurely licked its paws. Chu Qing walked cautiously over, feeling her nervousness every step she took, but she still swallowed her saliva and continued moving forward. But just as she was about to touch the black cat, the black cat stood up and left without giving her a straight eye. Watching the black cat run away, I just lightly touched its tail with my own hand, which felt very good. So, this black cat is real. Originally, Chu Qing was not afraid of cats, and even had a cat of her own. However, after some things happened, her personality underwent a revolutionary change. 
she became no longer the same as Chu Qing before, and this matter has always been Chu Qing's secret. She didn't tell anyone about it. Thinking that there was still class in the afternoon, I took a deep breath to calm my emotions and quickly went to the cafeteria for a meal. There were particularly many people in the cafeteria today, and when Chu Qing finally squeezed in, he accidentally spilled soup on his body. Chu Qing instantly became speechless, but she quickly finished her meal to fill her stomach. The cafeterias of Nanjia University all have televisions that can be provided for teachers and students to watch while eating. Now there is a news broadcast on TV, which shows a corpse with eyes gouged out and blackened all over. The body has been burned to the point where nothing can be seen. Chu Qing furrowed his brows tightly, really puzzled. It's time to watch this when eating. Doesn't he want people to eat anymore? However, this sentence was not spoken by Chu Qing, but someone around him has already spoken it out. It looks too scary. That's right, my appetite for eating is gone now. What's going on in this cafeteria? The food tastes bad, and we're still posting news like this on purpose, right? Who knows? Dot. The voices of discussion echoed around, and Chu Qing lost his appetite as he looked at the leftover stir-fried potato shreds on the plate. The news is still going on, although the voices of discussion are still ringing, not a single person has left, everyone is staring at the news without taking their eyes off. At present, we do not know the identity of the deceased, but there is still a pair of eyeballs in the deceased's hand. We are not sure if it belongs to the deceased himself. Let's take a look at other news. The cold voice of the host echoed throughout the cafeteria, and now everyone's nerves have been mobilized, speculating on this case one by one. Chu Qing left the cafeteria with her bag in hand. She had no interest in this kind of news, but now she has to restrain herself from spitting out the food she just ate. When I finally returned to the dormitory, the smell of luosifen from my roommate had an impact on Chu Qing. Help! Chu Qing covered his nose and opened the window. As the cold wind blew in, all three of them shuddered. Ching Ching, close the window quickly, it's freezing. Mu Wan took a sip of powder and was spiced, drinking water, and wiping tears with paper. No, this smell is too unbearable. Please be kind and don't bring it back. Chu Qing pleaded with tears in his eyes. Chapter 7 The Beginning of Everything You are listening at Novel Full Dot Audio. After several days of unremitting efforts, Song Wangchu's cold finally healed. To show his gratitude to Xiao Nan, he specially invited him to have a meal outside the school, but Xiao Nan always felt like he was lacking in interest. What's wrong with you? Someone treats you and you look uninterested. Have you watched too many small movies these past few days? Song Wang Chu was washing his cutlery in hot water, and couldn't help but laugh and make fun of Xiao Nan's drooping mouth. Fuck you, am I that kind of person? I don't know what's going on lately, I haven't slept well. Xiao Nan grinned and joked back, but he was right. His current mental state is not very good, as can be seen from his dark circles under his eyes. I don't know what's going on, but since a black cat died at school, various strange things have started to happen. By the way, have you ever heard about the magic city cat spirit? Xiao Nan yawned and looked at Song Wang Chu with a hint of light in his eyes. Although Song Wang Chu was not a local of the magic city, perhaps he had heard of it. Isn't this rumor happening everywhere? Confronted with Xiao Nan's eyes, Song Wang Chu thought carefully for a moment before finally shaking his head, indicating that he had never heard of it. Suddenly, Xiao Nan regained some energy and moved his chair to Song Wang Chu's side. He hugged Song Wang Chu's shoulder and began to smile with wrinkles on his face. Old Song, let me tell you something. This rumor has been circulating for a long time in the Magic City. Song Wang Chu was stunned for a moment, and then wanted to avoid the hand that Xiao Nan was holding on to him. Song Wang Chu didn't really enjoy such intimate contact with others, but he couldn't avoid this claw no matter how hard he tried, so he gave up. Then I'll start talking. 
that's what my grandmother told me before. Just as Xiao Nan was spitting uncontrollably, the dishes ordered by the two of them were also served on the table. The first dish is the spicy and fragrant Maokshuang. Song Wang Chu has been craving this flavor for a long time, and he hasn't eaten much since he started college. Every day, it's a light and watery meal in the cafeteria. Song Wang Chu's stomach was already hungry, so he quickly put a piece of hairy blood into his mouth, and didn't have time to care about Xiao Nan next to him. He ate it on his own. Xiao Nan would occasionally take a bite, but while telling a story to Song Wang Chu, she suddenly noticed him sitting stiffly in a chair, his body still trembling slightly, and his eyes showed fear, with a slight glistening water stain on the corner of his mouth. Old Song What's wrong with you, Old Song? Xiao Nan was frightened. He thought that Song Wang Chu had accidentally choked, so he quickly went to give Song Wang Chu a few hard blows on his back. Cough. Song Wang Chu's back was painful from being patted, and he kept coughing, spitting out the food in his mouth. However, Song Wang Chu's eyes were slightly red, not sure if they were spicy. His eyes were still fixed on the basin in front of him, which was filled with hair and blood as if there was something extraordinary inside. Old Song Xiao Nan followed Song Wang Chu's gaze and saw something floating on the greasy red soup, with some white objects rising and falling on the edges. Xiao Nan carefully scooped out the thing with a spoon, and upon closer inspection, it turned out to be an eyeball that had already been cooked and couldn't be seen clearly. The white nerves around the eyeball were still swaying in the wind with Xiao Nan's tremors. Ah. Eyes, it's eyeballs. Nausea, killed. Quickly report to the police. Killed. For a moment, all the voices rang out, and the owner and the owner's wife of the small restaurant also walked out upon hearing the commotion. After seeing their eyes, the owner's wife immediately fainted. The student who reacted quickly called the police, and Xiao Nan was also startled. After realizing this, he quickly dragged Song Wang Chu out. When the police arrived, many people had already gathered outside the small restaurant, most of whom were students, some were colleagues, and some came purely to watch the play. Let's go, what's going on here? The police officer who came was called Lao Ruan, whose full name was Ruan Jiangwo. As soon as he got out of the police car, he put on his leather gloves and ordered people to raise a cordon pushing everyone around the small restaurant to the back. What's going on? Who called the police? Lao Ruan's throat is a bit rough and hoarse, which is caused by smoking all year round. A student walked out of the crowd with both hands raised, saying that he had called the police. Lao Ruan looked up and down at the boy, wearing a pair of black framed glasses and a bookish expression. Coupled with the plaid shirt and canvas shoes he was wearing, Lao Ruan just looked at him, waiting for the boy to recount the story. The boy pushed his glasses and sat next to Lao Ruan, speaking about the trial he had just seen. That's how things are. When the boy finished speaking, a forensic doctor had already come in to extract evidence. No one dared to touch the eyeballs in front of the table, so they were always placed on the table, and the grease on it even adhered to the spoon. Captain. The forensic doctor had already put the spoon into the evidence bag, and after greeting Lao Ruan, he went to collect other evidence. Xiao Nan accompanied Song Wang Chu to sit on the flower bed outside, and the arrival of the police did not give Song Wang Chu a sense of security. He continued to tremble incessantly, and Song Wang Chu's mind was always filled with the eye dot catching scene he had just seen, unable to shake it off. Xiao Nan sat next to him, looking quite scared but he was calmer than Song Wang Chu. It was just that something slowly began to sprout in Xiao Nan's mind. Are you the students who noticed the eyeballs? Come back to the police station with me, you need to cooperate and make a record. Lao Wan walked outside and saw the two people sitting on the flower bed. The owner of the small restaurant told Lao Wan that it was they who discovered it. Lao Wan threw a cigarette butt and then walked up to the two people. The owner of the small restaurant is now complaining incessantly. What kind of trouble has he caused? What should he do in the future finally, 
Lao Wan got into the police car with the restaurant owner, Xiao Nan, and Song Wang Chu, and returned to the police station first. The news in university always spreads quickly, and soon the news about Song Wang Chu has already reached the ears of the students. Some students who are still eating even start to grab their own food, fearing that they will also catch an eye. Chu Qing had no expression on this matter, but her roommate kept shouting in her ear, instantly causing her ears to ache. Ching Ching, you still have the mood to eat. That's right, what happened now is that everyone has lost their appetite. Chapter 8, This is Just the Beginning You are listening at NovelFull.audio While speaking, Su Xiao pushed the door open and walked in, and the voices of the three suddenly came to a halt. Su Xiao continued to ignore the three of them as usual, and even said that the only person she could handle would be Chu Qing. She placed the food in her hand on the table, then took out her headphones, put them on, and started eating while watching the funny variety show. At this time, Su Xiao was considered normal in Chu Qing's eyes. Su Xiao was eating at a fast pace, staring at her phone while eating. Chu Qing noticed that she didn't even glance at the food. After dinner, it is customary to take a nap in the dormitory. Everyone returned to their beds, and Chu Qing wore an eye mask and got into bed. He yawned and fell asleep in no time. After Chu Qing fell asleep, she had a subconscious dream related to Su Xiao. She dreamed of a little girl curled up in a mud pit, with a trembling black cat at her feet. Chu Qing wanted to reach out and pull the girl up, but she just kept looking at her. The girl's eyes had no emotion and looked a bit cold. When the stalemate persisted, the black cat at the girl's feet lifted its head and let out two meows. For the first time, Chu Qing inexplicably felt that the cat's meowing was very harsh. She reached out to touch the head of the black cat, but her strength was still a bit heavy. The girl held the black cat in her arms and looked at Chu Qing with a timid gaze. Chu Qing only smiled gently and rubbed the black cat's head with force. Just as he heard a click, the black cat's head fell off at some point, but strangely, there was no drop of blood at the cut in the neck of the black cat. Chu Qing was a bit at a loss, but the girl saw the black cat lose its head and suddenly just smiled eerily, then reached out to pick up the cat's head. Sister, do you like black cats? Don't you like them? At this moment, the girl spoke up and Chu Qing realized that he couldn't hear what she was saying, but the girl's eerie gaze was enough to make her sweat profusely. Sister. Take a look at it, take a look at it. The girl suddenly shouted and threw the black cat onto Chu Qing with a fierce expression on her face. Chu Qing sat on the ground in fright as the girl was learning the crawling posture of a black cat, slowly crawling on the ground. Chu Qing knew it was aimed at him. She started struggling to get up and ran forward without risking her life. Gradually, there was no movement from behind. Chu Qing stopped and looked behind, only to see that the girl was gone, leaving Su Xiao standing not far away, holding a black cat in his arms and smiling at her, who? Who? Chu Qing exhaled heavily and finally woke up. As soon as she woke up, it was pitch black. She had forgotten the fact that she was still wearing an eye mask, and a sense of unease spread in her heart. Chu Qing hurriedly sat up from the bed. Chu Qing was panting heavily, and she raised her hand to wipe off the sweat from her head, only to suddenly touch her eye mask. After removing it, the sunset shot in from the window, and for a moment, Chu Qing was tightly surrounded by a sense of security. My roommate hasn't woken up yet so I quietly got out of bed alone and took a basin to the water room. The hallway of the girls' dormitory is particularly quiet today, as if no one is living there. Chu Qing walked into the water room without anyone. She washed her face with a basin of cold water and then looked up to see Su Xiao standing behind her in the mirror. Chu Qing, have you woken up yet? Chu Qing was already scared, and now her mood is not very good. She twisted the towel in her hand and didn't want to talk to Su Xiao. Who knew that Su Xiao said such a brainless sentence? What are you doing? Don't you know this would scare people to death? 
Chu Qing also raised her voice to refute this time. Su Xiao is always following her in a daze, and she is already feeling a headache. Chu Qing, are you awake now? Su Xiao asked this thoughtless question again, and her feet in yellow slippers slowly took a few steps forward. Now Su Xiao is almost as close as Chu Qing's face. What are you really asking? Su Xiao, you're a lunatic. Chu Qing was almost roaring and speaking, but Su Xiao just smiled faintly. Chu Qing, all of this is just the beginning. You better play this game well. As Su Xiao spoke, Chu Qing clearly asked a gust of foul odor from her mouth, which was the kind of stench from people who had died for a long time. Chu Qing resisted vomiting and pushed Su Xiao away quickly, holding the basin. She was afraid that she might not be able to run in the next second. After returning to the dormitory, Chu Qing saw Chu Qing sitting on the bed. At this moment, she was combing her hair on the bed, glanced at the storage room, and even smiled. You. You're not. You. Chu Qing was shocked and couldn't say a complete sentence clearly. Before she could finish speaking, the dormitory door was pushed open, and another Su Xiao walked in from outside, you. You. Chu Qing is now completely in chaos. What is the situation? Suddenly, she heard the question Su Xiao had just asked him. Chu Qing, have you woken up now? Have you woken up? Have you woken up? Ah. Chu Qing covered her ears to avoid the sound, but found that there was nothing she could do. After she shouted, she fell into a coma. Ching Ching. Ching Ching, don't sleep anymore. Wake up quickly, class is about to begin. Chu Qing heard a voice calling him, which was very familiar and reassuring. Chu Qing slowly opened her eyes, only then did she realize that she had fallen into a dream. What's wrong? Your face looks so bad. Mu Ruan stood by Chu Qing's bed, looking at her with a worried expression. I'm fine, hurry up and leave. It's time for class soon. Chu Qing didn't want to recall those two dreams anymore. Instinctively, as she passed by Su Zhao's side, she dodged slightly. Su Xiao saw Chu Qing's evasive gaze, but she didn't say anything. After locking the dormitory door, she put the key under the mat and then lifted her foot to leave. As she left, in an unseen place, a black cat lightly jumped onto the windowsill. After licking its paws for a while, it walked under the mat and arched for a while before leaving with the key in its mouth. The whole demon began to rain lightly, and the continuous rain made the city damp. Everywhere were students shuttling with umbrellas, except for a person wearing a black cloak who stopped and was quietly watching at this moment, he seemed to have found his target, and the person who couldn't see his face clearly snorted happily before turning around and disappearing into the rain. Chapter 9 Each with a Heart You are listening at NovelFull.audio The owner of the small restaurant, Xiao Nan and Song Wang Chu, sat on the bench of the police station, all three of them feeling a bit uneasy. Song Wang Chu was even more frightened and stunned. Come on in, it's your turn. Hey, you two go to another room. Just as the three of them were sitting dumbfounded, a police officer with a fat belly walked up to them. He put on a towering posture, raised his head and lowered his eyelids to look at the three of them, chewing gum in his mouth. The three were taken into a small room, which was different from the interrogation room, as it was all very rudimentary. Lao Wan sat inside smoking, carefully looking at the report just delivered by the forensic doctor. It was an analysis of the eyeball, which showed that it was a person's eyeball. Sit down. Lao Wan pressed the cigarette butt in his hand and carefully looked at the two young men in front of him. Tell me, how did you discover it? Song Wang Chu lowered his head, his face devoid of blood from the incident until now. Xiao Nan was beside him, but there was no expression on his face. It was just that he was also quite frightened, with fine beads of sweat on his forehead. Even if they are college students, they have never seen much of the world before. When faced with such a situation, let alone let them describe it in detail, 
neither of them wants to recall it now. Lao Wan looked at the two of them with a nervous expression, looking scared and foolish. After some thought, he got up and opened the door and walked out. At the moment when Song Wanchu and Xiao Nan heard the door closed, most of the tension in their hearts disappeared. Lao Ruan's sense of oppression was too strong sitting in front of them. In less than five minutes, Lao Ruan walked in again with something, which was two pieces of white paper and a black ink pen. Since I can't say it, let's write it down, including your names and ages. Lao Ruan placed the things in his hand in front of the two of them and said in a calm voice. His voice sounded very rough, as if it had been polished with sandpaper. Song Wanchu and Xiao Nan glanced at each other, then began to bend over the table and start writing with a swish. After entering winter, the entire city seemed to lose its temperature, leaving only cold buildings towering. Before winter, the entire demon had already lost its vitality, but there were still some species waiting in the darkness to survive. The two people holding pens and writing, apart from their own hands, are now stiff all over, and the temperature at night is much lower than during the day. Xiao Nan is fine, but Song Wangchu's health has been poor since childhood, and he feels like he can't survive in winter. Song Wangchu kept pounding his hands with the hot air in his mouth, while constantly changing his handwriting. The only good thing about Song Wanchu is that his IQ is super high. He can write with both hands at the same time when he was young, and they both write exactly the same. So they kept writing and writing, and finally, towards ten o'clock, both of them stopped writing. Lao Wan was already tired and fell asleep on the side chair, occasionally snoring. The sound of snoring penetrated the wall and summoned the police on duty outside. Ruan team, wake up, they have all finished writing. Wake up. The little police officer quickly went to shake old Ruan, and soon he woke up, but he was still completely confused and didn't remember what had happened. Captain, the young men have already finished writing. It's getting late, hurry up and let them go back to school. The little police officer pointed to Song Wang Chu and the others, and Lao Ruan suddenly remembered that there was still such a thing to do. He quickly got up and rubbed his cheeks with both hands, then grabbed the white paper and waved his hand to signal that the two could leave. Under the guidance of the police officer, the two of them slowly walked out of the police station. As soon as they left, they saw the owner of a small restaurant walking ahead. When the boss saw them, he quickly came over and grabbed both of them to complain. What have I done? Originally, this was just a small business, but now that things are going well, you can see how this business can continue despite such a situation. Sobbing. The boss wiped away his tears as he spoke, which made Song Wangchu unsure of how to comfort him. Xiao Nan and this boss have also forgotten their old friendship, because they often eat at the boss's restaurant, and their relationship is so good that they almost kneel down to pay respects. Xiao Nan asked Song Wangchu to take a taxi first, while she hugged the boss's shoulder from behind and began comforting him. The boss nodded repeatedly at what he said and slowly stopped crying. As they arrived at the door, Song Wangchu's taxi arrived and the three of them got in and left the police station. The taxi radio was playing a soft piano tune, and Song Wangchu was too tired and fell asleep leaning against the window. The rest of the people didn't speak anymore, but the taxi driver turned the radio to the news channel at this time, and now it's playing what happened at the small restaurant today. The voice of the female host is particularly cold at night, just like the weather on this night, the freezing person shivers. Until the school news was broadcasted, except for the driver and the sleeping Song Wang Chu, the other two people in the car were each with their own thoughts. At night, all the students fell asleep, leaving only the teacher in the office. Millie is still grading the students' homework in the office. Originally, she wanted to solve this problem the next day, but when she returned to the dormitory, her boyfriend was not there. It's better to stay in the office for a while longer. The heating equipment in the office is relatively friendly, bringing a touch of warmth to Millie on this cold and chilly night. After correcting the last student's test paper, Millie touched the position of the teacup and found that the tea had already cooled. 
What a house leak. It happens to rain continuously at night, Millie sighed and could only smile on her own as she stood up to take the hot water again. At this moment, the door to the office suddenly opened, and with this chill mixed in, it surged into the small office. Millie didn't wear a coat because she had heating, and now she's shivering from the cold because of the blow. She quickly took a sip of the hot water from the cup and then walked over to try to close the door. Just as I closed the door and hadn't taken two steps, it was opened again. Millie was a bit angry, and she felt that tonight's wind was against her. Millie sighed and went to close the door again. She looked out the window and now it's so cold outside that she doesn't even want to go out. She even wants to stay overnight in the office. Millie yawned and took a look at the live broadcast from the public resources of the backup school. However, she found that today's live broadcast was particularly explosive, not only with various women twisting and turning on the screen, but also with even more unexpected ones performing. At this moment, the door opened again, and this time there was a person standing outside. Chapter 10 Millie's Death Live You are listening at NovelFull.audio 17 hours before the live broadcast Millie was still sitting in her office. She heard the door open for the third time and turned around to see a black figure standing at the door. Who? Who's there? Millie only saw the person at the door in her spare light, but the person was wrapped in a black raincoat-style cloak and had no idea who the person was. The people outside the door did not respond to Millie's questioning and only maintained a standing posture. Millie got up and went over to check. She slowly walked to the door, but before she could react, the person at the door covered her mouth. Don't move around, I just want to play a game with you, Millie listened to the person speaking, but still didn't know who it was. She could only nod desperately, indicating that she would cooperate obediently, and tears of anxiety were about to come down her face. The wide brim of the hat covered the man's face, and Millie couldn't even see his face when she looked up. Then she felt a pain in her neck, and her eyes darkened and she fainted. Ten hours before the live broadcast when Millie opened her eyes, she felt as if she was blind, feeling like the pitch black of the past. I don't know what the man injected her with, but she still feels powerless and doesn't know where she is now. Millie felt so cold, as if she was about to freeze herself. She was only wearing thin clothes now, with a bare leg artifact and a skirt underneath. Millie is starting to regret why she wore so little now, it's like regretting to death. Millie's eyes were blindfolded, and now she can only perceive the world through her ears. She heard the faint meowing of cats not far away, as well as the foul smell coming in, and then the smell grew stronger and stronger, making her feel nauseous. Gradually, the cat's meowing became sharp, and the sound made Millie's scalp tingle instantly. In less than a quarter of an hour, the sound stopped, but the stench became even stronger, followed by a burst of footsteps. The sound of footsteps came from far to near, and only when Millie arrived in front of her did she realize it. The person in front of her crouched down, and with his movements, a nauseating smell came back to her face. The man reached out his gloved hand and gently caressed Millie's cheek. The smell of leather on the gloves is obvious, it's a newly purchased glove that this person just put on. Who are you? What do you want? Millie's voice trembled as she didn't know what the man's purpose was. Or perhaps this man wants to do something for himself. I have said before, as long as you cooperate with me to complete a performance, I will let you leave after the end. You must be obedient and obedient. The man spoke calmly his hands still constantly groping Millie's cheeks, which made Millie feel goosebumps all over her body. She couldn't hear the man's voice clearly, and could only determine the other person's gender. Moreover, the man's voice seemed to have a voice transformer stuck in it, which was very unpleasant to hear. Then the man stood up and left, but he didn't untie the rope on Millie's body and the black cloth in front of him. Millie began to shrink into the corner, which would give her more sense of security. Five hours before the live broadcast Millie felt like she hadn't eaten or drank anything for a long time. Now she feels like her lips are dry and her throat is about to catch fire, 
but there's nothing here except for the foul smell. Help. Who will save me? At this moment, Millie remembered to ask for help, but it was already late. How could anyone hear her weak cry, and who would come to save her? Millie had already begun to despair. She leaned against the wall and began to miss her desk, her dormitory bed, and the doll with her boyfriend's face printed on it. Two hours before the live broadcast the black-clad man's fingers kept tapping on the computer, and a series of codes quickly took off through his fingers. The man in black stared at the screen and dared not blink his eyes, afraid of typing the wrong line. However, he was confident in himself, and regardless, today's live broadcast was about to start. The man in black quickly linked to a website and posted his pre-recorded trailer. After finishing everything, the man in black smiled. Live streaming begins the man in black returned to the basement and saw Millie curled up on the ground sleeping. He took out a needle and stabbed Millie's neck again. The dosage of the anesthetic was not large and would not cause death. He put the needle into his waist bag under his cloak, and then gently patted Millie's cheek. Seeing that there was really no movement in Mili, he bent down and picked him up, leaving the basement filled with the stench. The man in black placed Mili on a chair in a small room, then opened his phone in front of him and untied the black cloth in front of Mili. The man in black opened his phone to live stream, and then a bucket of ice water poured directly from the top of the rice grains. At the beginning of the live broadcast, many people entered the room, which was mostly filled with students. They came in to watch the live broadcast to pass the time when they had nothing to do. They watched as the rice grains were awakened by a bucket of water, and their already soaked clothes outlined their curvy figure, attracting a large number of people to start commenting in the comments section of the live broadcast room. The man in black just watched the number of people coming in during the live broadcast and silently adjusted the angle of his phone. Mili doesn't know what happened yet, but she has a severe headache now. She was just drenched in a bucket of ice water and started to tremble for a moment. What are you doing? What are you doing? Mili saw the live broadcast in front of her, and her eyes felt a bit bright now because they had just been in darkness. She could only half open and half close her eyes to see clearly. Welcome everyone to my live broadcast room. This is my first live broadcast, and today we will bring you a visual feast. The man in black moved the camera towards the direction of the rice grains while speaking. Now many people have seen clearly that this is going to cause trouble, and everyone is starting to be impatient, demanding to start quickly. Gradually, the number of people in the live broadcast room had reached one million, and the man in black took out a utility knife from his bag and shook it towards the camera. Then I caught a black cat from somewhere, and the next thing I did was stab it in the abdomen. Accompanied by sharp pain, the black cat screamed in pain and its limbs were constantly twitching. Not only Mili, but also everyone watching the live broadcast was startled. Then the man gently held a utility knife and cut open the belly of the black cat. The man's technique looked very relaxed, as simple as pulling a chain. In no time, the black cat's intestines flowed out. The man threw the black cat aside and turned his head to look at the rice grains on the chair.